What is up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. I um, feel like I haven't been on here in forever. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. I was down at uh, the Total Archery Challenge last weekend in Park City, Utah, and it was everything I expected and more. Um, I was thinking about taking my camera down there, but I didn't have anybody to film and I didn't want to be that guy like asking, you know, holding things up while I'm setting up a tripod and all that. Um, but I am going to do a little recap of that um, in today's video. We're also going to go over this new shrewd optum scope that I got here, uh, as well as a couple just little tips and tricks that uh, I used shooting in like really steep, rugged terrain. Um, so starting with the tack event, uh, it was literally like everything that I expected and more. Um, an incredibly challenging course, lots of elevation, lots of steep shots, lots of, lots of realistic and lots of fairly unrealistic shots. Um, but extremely well run. I mean, everything ran smooth. You know, everybody had their target assignments. There was all sorts of great vendors there. Um, met a lot of really awesome people. You know, some new friends made connected with a lot of you guys on here um, that were at the at the shoot. And it was it was just an awesome reminder of like what an awesome community uh, the archery community is. You know, everybody's willing to help. Nobody's putting anybody down for anything. Um, just truly like an awesome an awesome event all the way around. And uh, I was honestly really pleased with the way I shot too. Um, so I shot, officially I shot, you know, a course each day. So I shot four courses. Um, I shot over par on all except the Yeti course. I was four down on the Yeti course. Um, if you don't know what I mean by par, so all tens is par. So on 25 targets, 250 would be par. Um, and uh, I was really, really happy with that because a lot of those targets are you know, 75, 85, 90 yards, small targets, you know, it's windy in, in parts. Um, so I was really happy with the way I shot. I really, really enjoyed the way this EVL performed and this new Shrewd Optum Scope was, was a lifesaver on, on certain targets and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I wish I could go to all those tack events. I mean, there's like, I think there's five of them and there's a lot of people that were traveling around doing that and I would, I would love to be able to do that some year. Um, but I'm still just thankful that I was able to go to this one. It's a crazy time of year for me to try to get away right now um, from, from the shop. And so, uh, yeah, it was good to get out, sling some arrows and kind of light that fire again, uh, so to speak. But um, one thing, so this is gonna be kind of a little shooting tip for you. So. A lot of people that I was shooting with were having really bad left rights. Um, some of that was because they didn't have a third axis on their site that was set, but a lot of it was because they just weren't watching their, their bubble in their site. Or if they were watching their bubble, it would start off good and then it would end up, um, you know, coming out of level. And what I noticed, and I see this a lot, is, you know, people draw a level and then let's say you got a really steep hill coming down, you know, side hill like this. They spend like three or four seconds just trying to get that bow bubbled into the hillside. And sometimes I mean, it feels like you're like, oh my gosh, like when is this thing gonna freaking stop? And uh, my trick for that, so let's say again, I've got a hill coming down this way, so I need to bubble into the hill like this. Rather than drawing level and then trying to bubble into it, when you draw actually over, you know, over bubble and then float back to level. It's much easier to let that bow float back into level then try to fight it to level, if that makes sense. Um, it's faster, I think it's easier, and just, uh, you know, you waste, you waste the best time of your hold just trying to get your bow level fighting it. So for me, I just bubble into that hillside, you know, further than I know I'm gonna need to, and then just let it come back to level and stop it. And uh, that worked out really well for me. Um, so that was a little, you know, lots of elevation there. Like lots of people shooting high and low because they're, you know, they're drawing like this instead of drawing level and then bending at the hips up. Um, and, you know, those are just things you learn over time. I mean, I've, I've made a video on that before, but you always want to try to draw level and then bend at the hips up or down or, you know, hook up here, bend at the hips and then draw. But you, what you don't want to do is go like this and then try to draw. Uh, the reason for that is that, you know, my bow is furthest away from me when it's straight out. And when I bring it up here and then I draw, I'm going to be floating like way down here. So you're going to shoot high uphill and low downhill. Because if I'm downhill and I do that same thing, 
I'm gonna draw and my hand's gonna be like this. I'm gonna be looking under my peep sight. So draw level or bend at the hips and then draw. Um, so lots of that going on. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of arrows on that hillside. I don't even wanna know the dollar amount of arrows that get broken on, on that event every year. Um, but I never missed any targets. That was a good, good for me, <laughs> I guess. Um, you know, I took like 15 arrows because I'd never been and I heard it was really tough, but I pretty much shot the same arrow the whole time. So that was good. Um, another thing that I think really benefited me, so this, I set this up pretty much specifically for that tack event. So um, this is kind of like a hybrid, you know, 3D target setup. So it is a scope. This is the Shrewd Optum scope. It's a five power lens and then I have a half power clarifier in my scope. So it's like a crystal clear, like four, four and a half. Um, and then, you know, I have the, the front and, and rear bar set up here. These are the Shrewd uh, Rev X's, or no, excuse me. This is the Shrewd Onyx. Um, and this is a 14 inch bar with a quick disconnect. So it makes it like a, and the weights, it's more like a 16 inch bar. Uh, and then, you know, 10 inch back bar here. Um, and so it's more maneuverable than like a true target setup. Um, but, you know, I still have the ability to dial this sight to the exact yardage with micro you know, micro adjustment. And uh, if you followed along my Instagram at all, you know that I was having some pretty crazy issues with trying to get this scope all set up, but I finally got it. Um, so this is the Shrewd Optum. Obviously it's made by Shrewd. Um, and this actually has two sunshades on it right now. So this is the, the long sunshade. And all these things just come on and off super easy. Um, and this is the one step sunshade on the front. So I got the 35 millimeter um, lens. And so you can see the sunshade there. They call this the single step. They make one that's got another white ring and it'll actually take it down to like a 29 millimeter um, sight picture or aperture on the scope, which for like indoor would be nice because you just want to see that one target. I don't want to see other people's arrows hitting the bale. Um, like I said, this is a 5X lens. You know, it's a feather vision lens. Um, they're Vitri Verde Plus or whatever. Um, they got a bunch of different ones. Um, but what's cool about this is, well, a few things. So this has the, the fiber shade on it. Um, and so what I was doing was most of the targets I didn't need my sight light at all. And I'll get, I'll get into this sight light here in a minute. Um, but you know, it's fairly open in Utah. There's not like a lot of dark timber. Um, I have a green, so that's a 14 thousandths green fiber optic in there. Um, and I pretty much just ran, you know, sunlight was plenty. I never had any issue where I really like couldn't see my pin at all. Um, but there were a couple targets, like literally, it, I think it was a, what was, what was that target? It was the, um, it was green. It was like a frog. It was like a 42 yard frog. And it was kind of in the sun and literally the green pin just like disappeared on it. Um, and in that case, that is when this sight light really came in to hand or came in handy so this is made by z brothers um, this is the evolution plus and so it's a little battery pack here it connects to a port and most scopes are going to have a light port like this and actually shines on the fiber optic that is wrapped around my scope here um, this particular one i can toggle so different brightnesses it's got like four different brightnesses um, i can also change how long it stays on for so for for tack you know i'm only shooting one arrow right so i just needed a to stay on for like a minute and then it'll shut off on its own. Um, but for shooting like indoor or something, you know, it might take you two and a half, three, four minutes. So I can go anywhere from one to five minutes of runtime before it'll shoot off on or shut off on its own. Um, and then I can also toggle between colors as well. So this will do green, blue, uh, pink, and red. And uh, with the green fiber in there, the blue and the green both show up as green. The pink makes the green turn into kind of like a bright orange and then the red actually just makes it red, which I was surprised. Um, they do make a clear fiber that I'm probably gonna order. Um, and then the fiber optic, you know, then your pin will show up whatever color the, uh, the light is. So right now it's actually on blue and you can still see, you know, it just looks green right there. Um, but on that green target, on that frog target, like I said, it, it my pin was completely washed out, so I was able to change it over to red and poof, I could see my pin perfectly. Um, this is just the Excel Achieve. It's literally, it's the CX. It's like their cheapest one, um, but it's perfect for what I do. I don't really care about the carbon. Um, 
you know, it's got all micro adjust, up, down, left, right, um, and it worked really, really well. I used the um, app called Archer's Mark, which is similar to Archer's Advantage, but you don't have to put in as much information. You just put in like your arrow weight, arrow length, uh, peep to pin, and or peep to arrow and peep to pin distance. Um, and then you sight in, I sighted in at 20 and 80. So just using the marks on the side here, you know, my 20 was on like 32, my 80 was down here somewhere. And you put in those values and then it just makes your all your marks for you. Um, so if I walked up to a target and range it and it's 36 yards, I'd look on the app, say, okay, 36, I gotta be on, you know, 42.6 on here. And all my marks were right on, so it worked really, really well. Um, so definitely an awesome scope. I really like this scope. It was between this and like the Ultra View 3. Um, and they're really pretty similar. Like I can, you know, I can put this pin position. I can, it'll go, there's eight different positions that I can position it in. So I can have an up pin, down pin, coming in from the side at two o'clock, four o'clock, whatever. Um, and it worked out great. So um, if you're looking for a new scope, I'd definitely look at this. This, I mean, I really like this. You know, I can have multiple different lenses in this retainer ring. So I could, I'm probably gonna get one and just put a black dot on it for indoor. Um, this worked great for outdoor. I like that small, defi or small fine pin. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for an awesome, awesome scope, I definitely recommend this Shrewd Optum. Um, it'll fit on you know any any site. So um, this is obviously an Excel. They make an Excel adapter for it, or you can just use the one that comes with it. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd kind of touch base there. I've been getting a lot of questions on this. Um, Lots of people asking how TAC went. So like I said, just kind of want to jump on and, and give a little rundown of the weekend. It was a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to try to make that again next year. Um, and I'd love to do the snowbird one as well. Maybe I'll do snowbird, snowbird instead of Park City. I don't know. We'll see. Got a year to think about it. But anyway, guys, if you have any more questions on this, hit that comment section below. Head over to InsideOutPrecision.com. Swoop up some merch for yourself. And uh, until next time, remember precision, precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle and I'll see you on the range.